Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to. Let me slide back a little bit, y'all. I want to make sure that I'm fully in the frame. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker, or Auntie Sharonda, and I am your host. And today we're going to be diving into accountability. This will not be a product uh, based video, but this will be more like a life lesson video. Okay. And what made me do this video is because a lot of times in relationships, a lot of times we don't like accountability. Okay. Meaning that we don't want to be held to a standard. We don't want to put our word on something and have to actually keep it and then have someone to tell us whether we did it or not. And this is not anything pertaining to just a male or a female. This is just people in general, especially some adults. But let me let me talk to you about accountability because a lot of people don't understand that correction is love, okay? When you have people and they were raised on survival and they were not raised on love, sometimes accountability can be extremely difficult for them. For example, I have seen people and they have children and they don't put boundaries in place for their children. They don't put rules in place. Their kids don't have bedtimes. They, their kids don't have structure. And it's certain things that their kids don't have that is vital for their upbringing. But then when they get into the school system where there is structure, right? Follow me. School becomes hard for these type of children because now you have rules in place. You have structure in place and you have people there holding you accountable. And when that's not happening at home and then you come to school, it becomes very hard for you. The same thing goes on with adults. I was up last night and it was like I was up like around maybe two or three o'clock this morning. And I was up just interceding and praying. And there were a lot of women on Facebook that were woke this time of night, partially because we have a storm. A lot of people don't have electricity. A lot of people up because they hot. And I was just praying and there was this woman and she sent me a message in my inbox and she didn't type the message out. She actually voice recorded her message and she sent it to me. And I can hear the pain in this woman's voice. Like I can literally hear the pain in her voice because she's in a marriage with a husband that she cannot hold accountable. And she went as far as asking if I could reach out to him and just talk to him. And I told her, I said, sweetheart, I can't ever overstep like that. But if you would like to book a session, you and your husband, y'all are more than welcome to book a session. But I will address the issue of accountability. Okay? Correction is love. When people love you, they will tell you things that you don't necessarily want to hear. If they know it's for your benefit. Because they love you. And they don't want to see you go in certain directions. So they will actually put it all out there and let you know, this is what I see. And if you don't make a correction or you don't pivot, you're going to end up going in a direction that you don't want to go. I was in high school. And I had a friend by the name of Tiffany Tate. We used to call her Keisha. Tiffany, if you're out there, how you doing, sweetheart? But this came to my mind this morning. When I met Spencer, who's now my husband, I was 17 years old. And this was my first real relationship. Um, I moved out from under the covering of my mom. And me and Spencer was living together. And when we started living together, I was still in high school. This was my first semester my, I was a senior in high school, first semester senior, meaning this was the fall session. We had just started back going to school and I was a fresh senior in school. All my life, I had been an honor roll student. All my life, I loved going to school. All my life, I maintained good attendance. In other words, when it came down to my academics, I didn't lack in any, I didn't lack, Okay. I started not showing up to class and I only had to go for half a day and I started not showing up to class. And when I did show up, I was late 
because I was too, cause I, I, well, I was enjoying getting dick. I, I, this was my first time ever being able to get as much as dick as I wanted to get. And I would not get up off that dick to get up and go to school. I, I would be on that dick and I would not get up. And this is a true story. And, and I'm, I'm telling it to you like this because I want you to understand how important accountability is, how important correction is, how important it is when people in your life that love you and want to see you do better, they're going to tell you better, okay? So I wasn't coming to class, and Tiffany Tate says, Sharonda, I need to talk to you. And she wasn't even a person that I would consider my best friend, Right? But she was a friend to me, but she wasn't like a best friend. She said, Sharonda, I, I know you um, I know you in a new relationship. I know you done moved out. I know you got your own place. But Sharonda, you got to come to school. See, the thing that Tiffany understood that I couldn't see at the moment is both of us grew up in the projects. Okay? And I left my mama to go and live on my own. And what Tiffany understood is, Sharonda, if you don't want to repeat this cycle, you don't want to repeat this generational curse, if you want to be great because I know you are great because me and you both on the honor roll and me and you both have always done well in school, Sharonda, you got to get up and you got to come to class. You can't lay up with your boyfriend every day, all day. Because if you do that, you're not going to be able to graduate. Right? This is so important because I wish I had listened. I wish I had listened. If I had listened, I would not have been a high school dropout. If I had listened, I would have not been, my life wouldn't have went in a certain direction. Because a lot of y'all don't know, but I was a high school dropout. And, and, and the thing was, it had nothing to do with exit tests. It had nothing to do with my grades. It had nothing to do with anything other than I lost focus. Laying up became more important than me getting up and going to do an English folk class. And that's all I needed to graduate. One year of English four to graduate. And I lost focus because I wanted to do what felt good to me. I wanted to do, in other words, I didn't want to have to make certain sacrifices anymore. I didn't want to have to get up anymore. I wanted to lay up and bust nuts every morning, all morning long, because it felt good to me. And as an end result, I became a high school dropout. I married Spencer as a high school dropout. When Spencer went to prison, it was one of the best things that could have ever happened for me. Because when he went to prison, I became focused again. Okay? I'm saying all of this to say sometimes God will remove people, remove, put you in situations, things that you have no control over for you to catch your head. When Spencer went to prison, I was pregnant with Gabby. I had Gabby. I looked at Gabby and I said, Gabby, I have absolutely nothing to offer you as a high school dropout. I have to get back into school. I was at the hospital and I contacted my guidance counselor and I said, I need to know what I need to do to get back in school. My, my circumstances are different. I'm married. I have a child and I only need an English for to graduate. The guidance counselor said, bring me all of your discharge papers from the hospital. Bring me something from your doctor saying that you cannot walk. My doctor complied. He did the paperwork. That way they sent me a teacher at home. Because, you know, they'll send you a teacher at home for a couple of weeks, but then you eventually got to come back to school. But the way they did my paperwork, I never had to go back to school. And I had a homeschool teacher. And I was able to get my high school diploma. And then I was able to go register to go to school at Southern. What I'm trying to get you to understand is when people love you, they hold you accountable. And either you're going to listen and you're going to make things easy for yourself or you're going to do like me and not listen and you're going to make the road hard for yourself. When I graduated high school, I was a married woman with a child and I walked the stage with children that I had never sat in the classroom with. They didn't even understand how I was in the, in the graduation line with them because they didn't know me. 
I was a grown woman walking the stage with children. I'm trying to get you to understand that sometimes in life, you have things that come in, in, your, in your life, they are distraction. And yes, it feels good. And yes, it makes you want to do it all the time. And yes, you can lose focus. But when people in your life, they love you, they will come to you and they will try to give, they will try to offer you correction. In other words, hold you accountable. And it's up to you to make the choice. Correction is love. It's up to you to make the choice. And the thing is, when you make a certain choice, you got to be willing to deal with everything that come along with that choice. I made the choice to lay in the bed and not get up off that dick. I made the choice to do that, so I had to take everything that came along with that. Meaning becoming a statistic as a high school dropout, becoming a statistic as a teen mother, literally having to go back to school with a baby, which made it extra hard. Literally going back to school with a baby and not even a husband or a baby daddy to support me. Being out here by myself single. Even though on paper I'm married. Meaning I had to go through that struggle by myself. But everything that came along with it, everything that came along with that decision, I had to eventually deal with it. So what I'm trying to get you to understand is, young lady who sent me a message, who husband who you can't hold him accountable, who you can't tell him anything, who who no matter what, and Lord knows if it, because because my inbox is so confidential, I'm, I'm not going to play the message because you all may even know, you may recognize her voice. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is sometimes when you see people going down a certain road in life, sweetheart, even sometimes you got to make a choice. So let me, let me explain something to you. When you can stand on your own two feet, People, they, they mindful of how they treat you when they know you can stand on your own two feet. But when you're in a situation and you are needy, you're a woman and you needy, meaning that you're a woman and your husband is literally taking care of everything and you having to go to him and ask him for this and do this and do that and this, that, the other. A lot of times they feel like they don't have to value what you say. Because in their mind, you're not bringing anything to the table other than their legacy, which is everything. But I always urge wives, make sure you have a passive income. You don't have to have a job to where you go to it every day and clock in, but you need some type of stream of income because at any moment, you may be required to stand on your own two feet. At any moment, you may be required to stand on your own two feet. And when you're dealing with somebody and they don't understand that you love them enough to be able to, to tell them differently and to correct them, and they want to go and stray on their own way and basically tell you, "F you, get out, get out their house." And and if you don't, you don't, y'all know how men can be. If you don't like the way shit going over here, move, move around, go get your own shit. Yeah. In other words, if you don't like, if you don't like the way I'm moving in my house, this is how men talk to women. If you don't like the way I'm moving in my house, go get your own shit. A lot of women can't do that. So they have to sit there and they have to suffer in it. Let me just tell you something. I, you know, some people have, some people can stand on their own two feet. Some people got a support system, baby. Some people got to go to a shelter. All I'm, all I'm saying is, you do what you got to do for your peace. You do what you got to do for your peace. Correction is love. And when you have men that value what you got to say and value your opinion, they will take a moment and listen to what you got to say. When they value it. But when they put their own selfishness above the greater good of everybody, they're not going to value anything that you got to say and they will dismiss you, which is what your husband is doing, ma'am. Will literally dismiss you and everything that, that you got to say, he will dismiss it. And at that point, you got to make a choice for your life. And when you make your choice, don't complain about it. Walk in it. When I made my choice to lay up and I had to go to school with a baby and all of this, I never complained not one time. Because I made all of them choices. In other words, I made that bed and I laid in it. So when you make a choice to stay, you make that choice to lay in that bed that you're creating. But if you make the choice to go, that means you're making a choice to let him know that I, I have to be heard in this relationship too. 
I'm making a choice to let you know that you can't belittle me, you can't demean me, you can't call me weak, you can't call me stupid, you can't you can't say that how I feel don't matter, that my feelings are not important. We have to make certain choices. In marriages, we have to be able to hold each other accountable. And at the moment that we cannot hold each other accountable, it's not gonna work. Y'all know I'm all for marriage, I'm all for people being together. I love I, I love to see people in love. But I'm also for healthy relationships as well. It has to be healthy. And the way this woman was sounding on this voicemail, she literally sounded like she running herself crazy. Trying to make somebody do that don't want to do. A lot of people don't realize sometimes men don't want to be responsible no more. Sometimes they get to the point where they, they start being low down and try to make you move around because they don't want to be responsible no more. They don't want the responsibility of a family no more. They don't want the, the responsibility of being monogamous no more. They don't want the responsibility of having to, to step up and be a man no more. So they will literally go backwards on purpose. And here we go trying to drag their asses along. Here we go trying to make them. But even God had to tell me, you can't put people in bondage. God had to tell me that last week while I was driving. You can't put people in bondage. You got to allow them to be who they are. And sometimes you got to get out the way. So, ma'am, my advice to you is sometimes you just got to get out the way. I ain't saying divorce your husband. I'm not saying that. But if you got the support of your parents, like you say you do, right? Sometimes you got to lean on the support of your family. Sometimes you got to get yourself healthy, meaning that you, you got to heal yourself. And sometimes you gotta you gotta show motherfuckers like this dog ain't gonna hunt. And if we gonna be together, we gonna be together, and then we gonna both be happy. If we ain't gonna be together, and you doing what the hell you wanna do, and I'm just sitting here suffering in the process. That ain't the way that go. That's that's not love. That that's that's not how, what God put us together for. He didn't put us together for that. He didn't put give you a husband for him for you to be a doormat to him, for him to walk all over you. No. No. You have to be able to hold each other accountable. The way you hold each other accountable is you have to be able to have a voice in a relationship. The way you hold each other accountable is there has to be a certain level of transparency in a relationship. Yeah, transparency is important. The way you hold each other accountable is there has to be consequences to bad behavior in a relationship. Okay? So, again, this video was not a product-based video. This is one of my life lesson videos. I mean, I'm not going to say it's even for married people. I, I feel it's for everybody. It's for anybody. Anybody can learn from this. You know, just know that when you make beds, you have to be willing to lay in them. And when people correcting you, a lot of times you have to understand that that correction ain't criticism all the time. Sometimes that correction is love. And you also have to understand when you have people who grew up on survival and not on love, they don't take correction well all the time. They don't look at it as love. They look at it as somebody trying to tell them what to do. And they look at it as I'm grown and ain't nobody going to tell me nothing. And sometimes even they have to lay in them beds that they create. Sometimes wives leave their husbands and guess what? They have to lay in them beds that they created. Yeah, it's life. It happens. We all go through it. I'm, I'm in the midst of going through it myself. But at the end of the day, you got to get on your knees and you got to pray and you got to actually let, you know, a lot of times God can't get with you when you got all this stuff going on. Sometimes you got to get to your point where you, you by yourself so you can hear. Sometimes you just got to be still and be quiet so that you can hear. See, when I, when I got to the place where I was being still and I was being quiet, I was able to hear God say, get out the way, move, get out the way. I can't work if you're going to be all up in the way. Okay? You all be blessed. I will be here at the store today, 11 to 7. Um, you know, uh, my, my prayers are with everyone, especially all of my people who still don't have lights and electricity and all of this kind of stuff. At this point, I know it didn't became a, a bit much for you at this point. But, you know, we, we Louisiana strong. You know, we... It's a tough time for a lot of people. It's a very tough time, okay? You all be blessed. You all say a prayer for somebody else, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.